Aloha. Welcome to Finding Your Piece of the Rock on ThinkTech Hawaii. I'm your host, Abe Lee. I have been a licensed real estate agent since 1973. I'm the owner of Century 21 I Properties Hawaii and work with close to 100 wonderful agents in real estate sales. I started Abe Lee Seminars in 1980. I have taught over 10,000 students to help them to get their real estate licenses and teach continuing education to real estate licensees to maintain their license. Our show is dedicated to helping buyers and sellers understand the process involved in a real estate transaction. Our special guests will talk about legal issues, escrow, title, getting a loan, surveys, home inspections, insurance, contracts, wills and trusts, and much, much more. And today we have a very special guest, a good friend of mine, and a wonderful instructor and a broker and a broker in charge. So he wears many hats and his name is Elliot Lau. Elliot, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. Good morning. Hi, thank you for having me. It's an honor and uh, good to see you. Yeah, same here. So we're gonna ask, tell us a little about your background, where you grew up, your education, your work history, and of course your grandmother, who is the grand dame of the Fong family. So we can't miss, forget her. So tell us a little bit about your background. Abe and I go back a long ways. He's, um, he knows my family. I'm born and raised in, in Honolulu, Hawaii. And I am uh, one of three, but my, my mother is one of 16 brothers and sisters. So my grandmother that Abe um, talked about is, is the matriarch of a gigantic family with deep roots in Hawaii. She's half Hawaiian. And I grew up with 70 first cousins. Um, so born and raised here, I went to school um, at Punahou and then went on to BYU in Provo, Utah, um, where I um, had great education, returned home after that. And uh, went in my, my, actually my career path was in the airline industry. I was um, always fascinated with airplanes and um, when I got a job with the airlines, I loved it. It was Mid-Pacific Airlines. If those of you old enough to remember them, they flew the props to the, the neighbor islands. And that was my career path. My father was always been a broker my whole life. And he kept telling me I should get my real estate license. And I had no interest in it. But he kept saying, you should have it, you should have it. And I finally went to get my license, more to appease him, never intending to get into real estate. And um, I still remember uh, in 1988, uh, the, the day I got my, back in those days, it took two weeks for your, when you took the state exam, you have to go to the mainland to get graded and you waited about two weeks for the results. The day that I got the letter in the mail saying I passed was the day that the airline I was working for went out of business. Mid Pacific Airlines filed for bankruptcy, and that spawned the new career in real estate. So that's kind of where my roots come from. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize that. <laughs> the day you get your license, that's your warning sign that, hey, you gotta get out of the airlines industry. <laughs> and I really remember Mid-Pacific Airlines. Uh, they were an yeah. upstart to Hawaiian Airlines and Aloha Airlines back then. Yeah. And I remember your father very well because he was a very uh, accomplished broker. And of course, your mother was uh, one of the Fong uh, girls, 16 children, can you imagine? And Elliot's grandma was only like four feet 10, just a tiny little lady, but she had 16 children, amazing lady. So I have fond memories of her. So we go back more than just real estate. I mean, I've known the Fong clan for really literally about 50 something years. Crazy, huh? Okay, so Elliot. Now you did tell us how you got started in real estate. So where did you go first with your license? It's funny. So I got my license and <clears throat> dad goes, I'm not going to train you. So he, he sent me to Horita at the time, Herbert Horita had um, probably the, the best known or the best real estate training classes in, in Hawaii at the time. This was back in the eighties. And I still remember my broker, Richard Fujiwara, was the was was my trainer. And at that time, it was you went through two or three weeks full time, five, I mean eight hours a day, nine to five, 
And um, I, I still remember Richard's very first day, the first thing he told us in class, which I share still today to new agents that I train and teach is service your client and you'll have a long, rewarding career. Chase the dollar and you're not going to be in it for long. And I still remember that. The first <laughs> yeah. words of wisdom he shared, and, and I still practice that today and train and coach that today still. So what happened after uh, Harita? Where'd you go? And what did you do? After Harita, uh, great question. I had a great transaction with an, a broker of a small company, um, and he hired me to be his sales manager. So after Harita, I went and joined him. And and um, I was probably there, the name of the company, I can't even remember, ProSource. Ed Chong right. was the broker. And we're still good friends today. Um, and But I was there probably for about six or seven years. And then I went to uh, Mary Warren when, when it was still with Close McCarter. So I was at Mary Warren. It was Warren and McCarter at the time. And I was there for several years. And then I went on my own. Um, part of it is by then it was um, during the Japanese bubble. So the market it collapsed. And, you know, when I got licensed, I said I would never do property management ever. But back when the, when the Japanese bubble collapsed, really, if you want to still be in the business, you kind of have to do property management. So I went on my own and, and was doing a lot of property management at the time. And... Um, at that point, I um, I was doing so much property management. I said, you know, if I spend that much time in doing sales, I'll make a lot more money. So I went back into sales. I was still on my own. And that's when um, Brian Laughlin of Premier Realty 2000 contacted me. And I joined him and we're together as partners for 22 years. Um, and so fast forward. 22 years later, after that, I was um, given an opportunity to join Compass. Compass is a big brand, big company, luxury broker um, on mainland and new to Hawaii. And so they hired me as their broker in charge on Oahu, and that's where I'm at now. So that's been my career in a nutshell. Great. Now let's go back to uh, Premier, because that's where the real estate school started. Mm -hmm. And I was the first teacher there. And yeah. I knew Brian when he was in high school. So Brian mm -hmm. and I go back many years. And I was recruited by a guy named Mike Imanaka to come and be the premier or the first teacher. And of course, you succeeded me and took yeah. over what now called INET. So yeah. tell us what happened in the pre-licensing portion, because that's what I'd like to focus on for the next few minutes, is what okay. did you teach? And what were the main things that you were trying to teach to your students? So, great question. Um, you know, I, my um, formal teaching for pre-license actually started in California. So, mm -hmm. after joining INET, I mean, Premier Realty, which then turned to INET, um, I went to California with Brian, and I was doing some business development things there, including teaching. So, I was an instructor in California first. And um, and so we were. Uh, it, it, they have similar um, similar courses. Um, their 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 requirements. I think is eighty hours of classroom instruction. But you know what I would teach, and um, when I moved back here and started teaching pre license on Oahu, um, really I was teaching things like real estate concepts. You know, by the way. Going back to my BYU days, I actually got my license in Utah back mm -hmm. in the 70s. And so that's, I keep forgetting that that's where my real estate career kind of started. But um, um, I, I since have long gone past Utah. But I still remember real estate concepts was new to me when I, when I first was introduced to it in Utah. Um, and so I, I, you know, this is the thing about real estate pre license is that. I keep telling agents on the first day of class that you're going to be learning a new language. And many of the concepts are very conceptual and very hard to understand. And so I try to, to, to 
blend the instruction with real life concepts. So understanding what real estate is and, and the concepts. And then I spend a lot of time on some of the, the bigger items that um, include agency, disclosures, state laws, um, because I know that's what they're going to test you on. A lot of my, a lot of my curriculum it revolves around really passing the state exam and, and getting them prepared for that. Okay, so now when you're teaching, because you're also practicing realtor, so you're selling as well as teaching, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay, so now you're now in the field doing the things that you're teaching the students to follow, right? Mm -hmm. So which textbook did you use to be your guide? Well, um, principles and practices, when I got licensed back in the 80s, um, Paige Matusik was the author, co-author of the book, Principles and Practices of Hawaiian Real Estate, which really is a staple for Hawaii, which now you've taken over. You've, you've succeeded in, in the, um, you know, revising and, and editing and, and of, of the book because laws change all the time. And, uh, but yeah, I, I've known principles and practices since the eighties. And that's what I used to teach myself. Sure, and you've taught hundreds of students through INET. And I noticed that you had a lot of five-star Yelp reviews. And so you must be pretty good for them to have that many five-star Yelp reviews. But what were the main concepts that you're trying to teach to the agents as far as licensing and ethics are concerned? Well, I, that's a great question. Um, you know, I believe that, first of all, you've really got to interact and make the class interesting because when you think about it, it's not the most exciting, dynamic con um, subject matter to be teaching. So I think that that making things a little more palatable, making it more fun, making it more interesting, um, I would I would always mix things in when I when I would teach a a certain concept like agency. Agency law is conceptual and boring, and it confuses most people. When you when I, I then I try to um, involve real life scenarios. What 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 this all means to get people to understand, ah, okay, now I'm taking something that's very conceptual to um, real life situations where people can relate to it. And I found that was probably the best way to get people to understand what you're teaching. Okay, so how long does it take to get a license? That's a great question. So the law, the, the Hawaii State Law is 60 hours. And, um, we did it in four weeks in the beginning, but four weeks involved a full day on Saturday. So you're doing two weeknights and then all day Saturday. And it was tough. An all day class was tough for students. It's even tougher for the instructor. You know, to teach, to talk for eight hours. I know you still do that, Abe. I don't know how you do that. But man, after an eight hour day of teaching, you know, it's not like, when you go to school for eight hours as a student, you go through you're going through eight different teachers for eight different classes. This one, I mean, when you're an instructor of a real estate school, you're talking for eight hours, and it's 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 tough. And so we stretched it into a five week class where now we can do half days on Saturdays and and get it in. And you know, I always thought four weeks is is tough. You know, I was just talking to one of my agents just this morning, and when he got his license, he did it in five days, which is 12, five 12-hour 12 days. And I went, that's brutal. I, that, that's, I don't know how you can do it. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. So now, the students have to pass the school exam first, and then what happens? Yes. So you have to, you, so the, the requirements to apply for a real estate exam you have to submit an application to the real estate commission. In order to really, uh, the prerequisites for applying for a license, you have to show that you've passed the state exam, which is administered by a, a contracting company called PSI. In order to sit for that exam, you have to take and pass a class, which is like yours and, and, and my class, 
and yet that's the 60 hour course. So working it backwards, you to apply, you have to have passed the state exam. To sit for the state exam, you have had to take the class. So it starts with us and the classes, and you have to pass your class first before you're even allowed to sit, sit for the state exam. So I understand that there's two parts to it, the state portion and the national portion. How many questions in each and what percent do you have to pass it with? So there's 80 questions for the, the, the uniform and there's 50 for the state. And you have to pass each one at 70% passing rate for each. So okay. the uniform covers the things that are uniform across pretty much all 50 states, things like tenure, um, methods of ownership, um, real estate principles. And then the state portion deals with state-specific laws because every state has their own set of laws, which is why licenses aren't reciprocal because every state has different laws. So now you pass the state exam, school exam like yours, and they pass with a 7% passing rate. How long do they have to take the state exam? Great question. So from the time you get your certificate from the school that you've successfully passed, you have two years to complete or to sit for the state exam and pass that. However, I tell students, don't wait for two years because if you wait for two months, you will have forgotten all the information. I said, you should be taking it. If they allowed you, you should be taking it two hours after you get the state, the, the school certificate, because you only start to to forget things. And the longer you go, people think that I'm going to spend a little time and study a little more. I'm like, if you have a study by now, you're not going to find the time. Just take the exam. So now you took this school exam, you passed it, and you had two years to take the state exam. You take the state exam, and then how long do you have to actually do something with this license that you can get. You don't get a license by passing the state exam, but you have the right to get a license. So how long do you have to get something with that test that you passed? That's a good question. People think that once they pass the state exam, their license, they're legal to practice real estate. No, that's just the next step in, in your whole journey is once you pass the state exam, now you have to make application to the state for a license. So the, the state exam is just one of the, the prerequisites. You actually have to apply to the state. You have two years from the time you pass the state exam to apply for your license. Just because you've passed the state exam doesn't guarantee, right? There's, there's about 10 or 12 questions on your application that you have to answer. And um, basically they're all questions relating to your character. And if you, you know, because that's what the law requires, you have to be of good character, not just pass the exam. So you could pass the state exam and not be not able to get a license because of some things that happened in the past. So now people ask me, well, I want to get into commercial real estate or residential real estate or something else. Do I have to have a separate license for those different categories? So how does a state of Hawaii, uh, Hawaii license work? What can you do with so, your license? So a state license, once you receive the license from the, the real estate commission that says you are licensed to practice real estate, you are not licensed to practice anything that's real estate related, commercial or residential, as well as practice anywhere in the state of Hawaii, not just on, you know, if you take your class and test on Oahu, you can practice, you're legal to practice on all islands. But that old saying goes, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. <laughs> That's true. So mm -hmm. I understand too, that you can do actually property management or timeshare, residential and commercial. I guess those are the four basic areas where you could exercise your license. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and so, but you know, the, the courts, and the law still holds you to a standard of, of competence and expertise. So just because you're licensed to practice any form of real estate, um, the, the law will still say, you still have to have competence in doing that. So how would you go about once your students have passed the test and they say, Elliot, who's gonna hire me? Now, what do you tell them to do? 
That's a good question. So usually some at some point during my class, the, when they're getting their license, I spend about an hour. I just take a break from studying real estate and give them an idea of what they're getting into. Because I joke with all my students in every class. I said, you know, in two or three weeks, you're going to be licensed to practice real estate. And this is what all newly licensed real estate agents look like. <laughs> right? Because it's so true. I now have a license. What do I do with it? Right? So I used to go through, I said, here are 10 questions to interview the, your real estate broker, because these are questions that you need to know. You know, in this business, there's a really high failure rate. And I think a lot of it is people don't know what they're getting into, what is involved in being successful in this business. You know, there's very few other careers you can go into that you can spend so little money and so little time and make a seven-figure income. But by that same token, most people won't. And it's because they don't understand what they're getting into and what it takes to, to uh, make this business. And really, it starts with having the right broker. So how would you go about interviewing? Because you got residential brokers, and then you got commercial brokers, and sometimes they don't cross over, do they? No, and it, rarely do they cross over. The um, residential is typically where most agents start into, um, unless you have some kind of a, a kickstart in commercial. Most commercial brokers don't want new agents. Um, most uh, there are exceptions, but it's it's a these they're very different in the nature. You know when you think about residential real estate, residential is really real estate that's for habitation, right? And that's really encompasses all residential real estate is real estate that's meant for habitation. Commercial real estate is everything else, so it is so broad and diverse. There are a lot of specialties that that are involved with it, and so residential real estate is generally the I shouldn't say easier road because it is not easy. There is nothing easy about either one, but I think it's the one uh, residential is is much you're much more likely to get up and running much quicker because you're helping people buy homes, and that's very relatable to most people. Commercial is a whole different animal altogether. Okay, so now. The agents have come to you, let's, and you were at INET, and what was your uh, responsibility at INET? At INET, I was the broker in charge, and so the broker in charge by real estate law is the person that's one of the people responsible for the conduct and actions of all your agents. So we spend a lot of time on training. I did, I, I enjoy training, um, you know, teaching agents how to get, how to be successful in the business but also how to oversee and keep them out of trouble. Um, because, you know, although um, you're responsible for all your agents and their, their real estate activities, you cannot mandate that they attend training or, or sales meetings or anything else. And so you have to walk this fine line of really having your agents um, competent and trained to do this job. And, you know, when you think about it, you, they're dealing with a lot of money, right? I mean, even even what we call today a small deal, right? A two hundred fifty thousand dollar deal. I keep having to remind agents. I don't know what world two hundred fifty thousand dollars is a small sum of money. Yeah, really. And now the average price or medium price of a condo is like five hundred grand, and the house yeah. is over a million, which is yeah. crazy. When you and I started, we never had no idea you'd ever get that high, right? Yeah, no, not in a million years. <laughs> so, Elliot, we're running out of time, unfortunately. I'd like to have you come back and talk about the contents of the course and how it would help the consumer. Because really what you're teaching the student, the agent to do is how to treat the clients so that there's no lawsuits and there's proper disclosures yeah. and everything is being done correctly and ethically. So we have a lot more things that I would love to have you come back and talk about because of your years of experience in both teaching and also managing and supervising. So um, what advice would you give in the last minute or two about 
a person that wants to think about going into real estate as a career, part-time, full-time, or whatever? I think the my advice is to really understand what you're getting into. You know, there, there's kind of a, a joke about, um, you know, people see real estate agents, they dress well, they drive nice cars, they live in nice homes. And it's such an easy job. They, they, they sit in an open house and they make millions and millions of dollars doing this. And I'm all, okay, that's, that's kind of akin to when you watch, um, you know, I, 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 NFL is going on right now, right? And then you watch these, these professional football players that make obscene amounts of money. And you think, wow, that would be so great to have that career. But the, what people don't see is all of the preparation it takes in the background, how much training, how much working out. Same thing with real estate. Can you be successful in it? Yes, but you have to be, you have to be aware of what it takes. You know, you can make a lot of money in this business. Just understand what you're getting into. Um, you're going to have to do things that you that take you out of your comfort zone. Right? You have to talk to strangers. You have to have conversations with people. These are things that some people just can't get past picking up the phone and calling people you don't know. These are scary things for a lot of people, but that's really the most successful agents do that the best and do it the most. Elian, I can't tell you, thank you so much. And we're just touching the tip of the iceberg. Now you talked about the school. What I'd like to do the next time is talk about the course content a little bit, but then also how it relates from the agent to the consumer and the fiduciary responsibilities that the agent has and how big a responsibility that is, because a lot of people don't think about that. So yeah. thank you so much, folks. If you enjoyed the show, please go on to it. It's going to be broadcast, and it'll be on the Think Tech Hawaii archives. So just look up Elliot Lau, and then we should have the video. And please tell your friends about it. And if you have any interest about the real estate schools, I do have ableseminars.com where you can get information on the pre-licensing school and the process to get a license. So, Elliot, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. We'll see you one more time at least. <laughs>